For instance, I would think about how easy it would be to just be on the top of this building and to just walk off. You know, I was feeling this way every day for so long and it feels so heavy and it's so much pressure that um, it's just like thinking about what a relief it would be to just step off the balcony and be done with it. What's up guys, my name is Raif Darazi and today I want to talk about something that I have been admittedly putting off for a couple weeks. You know, over the course of the pandemic, primarily, I've been feeling an increasing sense of anxiety and consequently depression, especially lately. In speaking with a lot of you, and many of you have reached out to me, messages, DMs, comments, etc., I know that a lot of you have struggled with anxiety and depression as well. And I've been able to respond to that coming from a really good, stable, strong place. But I also want to share my experience dealing with anxiety and depression while in it. So that's what I'm here to talk about today. Anxiety and depression are something that are definitely not new to me. It's something that I've been dealing with my whole life. As a kid, it wasn't as apparent because uh, it manifested in a very different way. I was kind of like living in la-la land and everything was happy and hunky-dory on the outside, but I, I was dealing with it on a subconscious level. And so it would manifest itself in really strange ways, like my hygiene was was atrocious, it was bad. I was always dirty and I had dirt under my nails and I just didn't care to clean myself. And you might say, well, that's kind of normal for a kid, but for me it was that in conjunction with other things like not going to the bathroom when I needed to go to the bathroom. I would sit in class and I would have to go pee and I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go, I would hold it. And I would go from class to class to class holding it. And I didn't want to go until after school. And I, by the time I reached a bathroom after school, it, it was like to the point where I was going to pee myself if I didn't go within seconds. And one time I did, you know, in the middle of the street because I had been holding it all day and couldn't hold it any longer. I was always getting sick at least once a month, sometimes a couple times a month. Um, I was getting, you know, I was going to the nurse's office all the time. I had asthma that I was dealing with a lot. And I suffered from f very frequent nightmares. And then here, another thing that I did as a kid was whatever situation I was in, I was always looking for the exit. I was always mindful of where the doors were, windows were in a room, so that in case there was a fire or an earthquake, or a murderer or something, some other calamitous event, I would have a plan of, as to how I was going to exit that situation. And I don't think that's normal for a seven, eight year old, nine year old to be thinking about, right? And this was all in response to traumatic experiences in my life as a kid. And as I got older, it manifested more directly in my teens. I finally, you know, that, that facade, that la la land bubble that I was living in, crumbled in high school and at that point it turned into actual depression and anxiety and that culminated in a an attempted suicide by overdose and then from there i was able to deal with all these things that had been kind of bubbling around in my subconscious for so long and deal with a lot of those issues and be able to tackle it in a healthy way and kind of regain a sense of, of foundation, strength, stability. But since then, you know, it will come and go at different points in my life to varying degrees of intensity. And so I'm finding myself with the pandemic, you know, all this stability, this foundation that I had built for myself over years kind of crumbled away in a lot of ways. You know, I lost my main source of income and then another source of income and then uh, I really wasn't able to work out in the way that I had trained myself to for almost a decade and progressively gained more and more weight. And then I lost my desire to work out. I started avoiding responsibilities, whether it be around the house or, or just, you know, doctor's appointments, things like that. 
Um, my motivation in general has been on the decline. If you hear some noise that's dookie on the ground rolling around. Um, I stay at home. I stay inside more and more. Don't want to go out. Kind of don't look for social situations or avoid them. Um, and then most recently, it really culminated, I would say, towards the end of July. And at that point, um, I just noticed that I was sitting around and kind of daydreaming about suicidal things. So, for instance, I would think about how easy it would be to just be on the top of this building and to just walk off. You know, I was feeling this way every day for so long and it feels so heavy and it's so much pressure that um, it's just like thinking about what a relief it would be to just step off the balcony and be done with it. Not that I was like in a place where I actually wanted to do it or I was planning to or anything like that, but for me at this point in my life, that is a huge alarm bell red flag that I need to change something right now in my life. And at that point, it was very obvious that I was stretching myself too thin with all of my work commitments. I just had to pull back and really give myself some more space and give myself some more simplicity. And so I did that and I have been feeling better. I've been slowly kind of regaining a sense of self and, and passion. And But I found myself in the last week or so kind of slipping again. And I'm just, I'm just kind of floundering at this point. And I guess I know that eventually I'll come out of it. But right now, and in the past year and a half or so, it's just a lot. And um, um, I'm just overwhelmed. And I'm a, vi I'm, I'm an, I'm an overthinker. I think a lot. And I'm just, I just feel like I'm drowning a lot into tr trying to figure out what the right course of action is. And, but I was spent, spent the last three hours just looking for a therapist and it's so hard to find a therapist and it's so hard to find a therapist that is covered by insurance. <laughs> and so I've just been looking and reaching out to a few people. And so hopefully something will stick because I just need to, to talk to someone who knows who knows what they're doing because <laughs> I'm at a loss right now and I just need to admit that to myself like Rafe you need help seriously need help oh god I don't know why I can't talk just doing this video I feel like I have a voice inside my head that's saying why are you doing this video it's stupid nobody cares it's self-indulgent you're the last person that should be complaining about anything and yeah so i'm i'm actively fighting that voice in my head while i'm doing this so it's kind of it's kind of difficult um when i have received messages from from some of you who have been struggling oftentimes i say that the objective isn't to not feel anxiety or depression at all because oftentimes it's just a fact of life and it's something that we'll a lot of us have to deal with and struggle with and for some of us more than others and so in that case the idea isn't to completely get rid of it so that we never experience it ever because then you'll just be met by disappointment after disappointment and that um, is a like a negative feedback loop the win really is that we prolong the periods where we feel good and the periods when we don't feel good that they are shorter and or not as severe and so practices like gratitude journaling and meditation and goal setting and and reading like encouraging books and all these little activities and things that we do to help ourselves is towards that end towards that goal so i think i, th I think that's a really good place to start is setting that as the expectation not of like oh, i don't want to 
ever feel depressed. I don't ever want to struggle with anxiety because oftentimes that's not realistic. For me, I don't think that's realistic. That was a big moment for me, recognizing that my expectation should be to lessen those periods. Then I don't feel bad about myself. I don't feel as much shame or as much embarrassment, although I do feel some to an extent even now. I know that this isn't going to be over tomorrow or the next day. I might Actually, I might wake up and feel amazing, but um, over the long period, this is going to be something that I have to really work through. And hopefully I'll have found a therapist by then and when I'm following up with you guys and continuing to share this journey. And so, you know, this is something that I would love to discuss with you guys in the comments down below. Hear your thoughts. How do you guys get through these periods? Uh, stuff like that. So I'm definitely going to be delving into this topic a lot more, taking deeper dives, going into certain areas of, you know, what I'm struggling with more in depth. But um, I just wanted to start here by acknowledging that this is something that I have been dealing with. I have been dealing with intense anxiety and of recently increasing levels of depression. Please like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this with someone who might benefit from this type of content, and I will see you all soon. Bye.